Welcome back to another episode of Deer Season 23. The dog days of summer are here and the guys at Drury Outdoors are busting their butts to get prepared for September. First up, we're gonna join up with Scott and I and uh, we're on the new farm and of course, what can go wrong, does go wrong, part of owning uh, property, part of having equipment, but nonetheless, we're out there, we're trying to tackle these problems one by one as they pop up and get ready for the deer season. This one is gonna be as groovy as groovy gets. I kid you not, this is one of the neatest places I've seen. And we saw more buck sign, more rubs and sign and scrapes on this piece than I, that I've got on my farms. Today is June the 2nd. It's the first time that we've really been to the farm since we did the burn. I mean, we came back up here, you planted, you know, maybe three, four weeks after we burned. Yep. But other than that, we really haven't been here. We came up here and struck during turkey season, didn't have much luck. And um, now it's really time to catch back up and get back to work. So one of our issues in crossing through here and getting the access to the rest of the farm is this kind of mud pit that we have on our two track. And so, you know, just by the lay of the land, everything feeds into this crevice that kind of then goes down the stream into the, uh, uh, um, a little bit of a larger creek down here. Problem is it's all clogged up and the water can't flow. So it just sits here and during, you know, the burn and planting and we just rutted it up. So trying to do the best we can with that Cabela's tractor, but we're just not getting the leverage on the bucket that we need. It's, a, it's, it's just a job for a skid steer. Yeah, really. I mean, it's a little bigger job than, than what our equipment's prepared for, but yeah. you know, we're making the best of the situation. We are kind of getting some of the water drained off. That way, when the skid steer is able to come, uh, it'll be a little bit easier for him to move all this material around for us. And then we got plenty of other things to do today. So we're going to get some analogics out, some more minerals. I'm trying to think here. We're going to try to hang a stand. We're gonna adjust a few cameras. We're just gonna make some micro adjustments here. And ultimately the plan is to get this stuff done now here in the early summer. And then when we wanna bring our blinds in and our trailers and all that stuff, um, we, we won't be rutting the place up. So doing a little bit of prep work. It's gonna be 90 degrees a day, high humidity, but it's better than 100 degrees that will hit in August. Amen to that, <laughs> so, Plenty of water, we'll be fine. Yep. All right, back to it. Let's do it. I'm a farmer, they said. Get your own ground, they said. <laughs> All right, so here's what we'll do. All right, so we're a couple hours in here at the farm this morning and got a lot of stuff brush hogged. We did kind of clear out part of that little gully that we, we wanted to fix. So our buggy died, <laughs> the tracker, and then, because we didn't charge it, and then we broke the wheel on the brush hog. So we're altering our plans a little bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna go take the tracker to try to find somewhere to charge it. And I think Scott and Ben are gonna load up the front bucket with the analogics, with uh, the weed eater, with the tree stands, and they're gonna head and, and put out the mineral sites. And then they're gonna also uh, hang a set before they head out. What's been awesome is seeing how much the farm blew up from what we burned. It, you know, we came, we stopped in briefly during turkey season and it wasn't nearly like this as grown up. It's really cool to see everything that we burned is really thick, really grown up. And um, it, it, you kind of can see your vision coming to fruition. And we checked on the food plot, there's clover co coming up, so that's good. So uh, I think we're gonna be able to mow a path at the end of the summer, right up to the food plot, put us a uh, muddy or a hawk blind up there and we'll have great access all the way up and uh, be pretty undetectable. So that was the plan and based on how everything looks right now, I think it's gonna work to perfection. So I'm excited, we're getting one step closer to the fall. We just gotta get through some of this maintenance stuff. 
you know, when you own a farm and or even lease or whatever, and you're doing this stuff on your own, you know, we're not mechanics. We're not. We're lucky we have any equipment. The equipment's kind of old and beat up, and um, you, you just run into these kind of things. This is part of it. So we'll try to get things fixed and get running again. And there's always something, but uh, slowly but surely, we're gonna keep kind of just checking off boxes and getting stuff prepared for the fall. Take land management to the next level with DeerCast's exclusive virtual rain gauges. Pinpoint accuracy and historical data, all powered by industry-leading ag weather services. DeerCast has the tools to keep you ahead of your game. Muddy swap, baby. I like this little knife and the cool thing about it is whenever your blade gets dull all you really got to do is lean it back the blade slips right out you get a new one out of the pack which I don't have with me of course and you just if you do it the right way there you go slide it right back in lock it back into place that blade ain't going nowhere so pretty convenient deal there from muddy all right now the good stuff we got some mineral dirt, 180. This is the granular mineral. So we're gonna start with that, get some of that mixed in the soil. Um, I've got a couple blocks down here, and then I've also got some of the anti-mineral liquid. So we are gonna make a delicious, delicious spot here for the deer. So um, I guess let's go ahead and start with the 180 there. All right, so. We've got this spot that uh, Matt and I kind of started last time we were up here. Um, we had some mineral dirt 180. So we went ahead and started the mineral site here and it's actually been beaten, trampled down, kind of dug up. Um, you can tell they're kind of eating a little bit of the stump too around this fallen down tree. So I know they're already using it. We're just gonna sweeten it up for them and, and give them a good mineral site that they can hit year round. So as you can see, this stuff's you know, really nice. You can't smell it through the camera there, but man, it smells good. And it's loaded with vitamins and chelated minerals, which are, you know, everything that the whitetails need to grow antlers or, you know, produce milk for the babies, for the fawns. Um, this has everything that they need to keep them healthy, keep them strong and keep them growing at their full potential. So we're gonna go ahead and put one bag here at this spot. We're gonna set this on top of the granules and then top it off with some liquid. Pro tip, I like to shake these jugs up before I dump them out, just in case they have any other stuff in them that needs to be mixed up. All right, one of the last steps to this little process after we put the mineral site down there is we're gonna hang this Reconyx camera to kind of catch what's traveling through this spot. Where this mineral site is located is directly just east of where we put our clover plot in this spring. Uh, but we got the mineral site just off to the side of it. And as you can see, there's a travel corridor going right through this little cut in this timber. So hopefully we're gonna get the deer to come out of their bedroom over that way, that thick side of timber, travel right through here, hit the mineral site and come right on to the food. All right, we got to stick and pick where we want it. Last thing, I'm wrapping this little cord up and what this little silver cord is, is this goes to our solar charger. So you plug it in right there on the bottom and now we got solar charger. So no more checking batteries on this camera. It should run all year long until that card fills up. Are you ready for this, Ben? Yep. Let's do it. For the tree stands. Uh, it's only like 95 degrees, beginning of June. Hot, sweaty, humid. Thanks for coming. Yeah. First uh, set on the new piece, right? First set, yeah. We've actually already got a, a tree that we picked out. We've got it pinned on DeerCast Maps. Matt was the one who picked it. So if it's in the wrong spot, he sent me the wrong pin. We're gonna blame it on him right now. But uh, yeah, looks like a nice tree. We just refreshed the mineral site back there and uh, we're gonna get stands and try and get this thing up as quick as possible and then go find some more water. I'm 
most important piece of equipment today, regardless of the tractor, the tracker, anything, safety harness. Before I hang this tree stand, I'm going to use my safety harness. I've also got a little lineman's belt. It's gonna help me get up the tree safely um, until I'm able to get the safe line up in the tree and get it secured as well. So there is no excuse for not wearing your safety harness. Come for the day. It's hot. I don't feel good. It's time to go get some water. Pull a couple parts off the tractor and we'll probably just head to the house after that and try and cool off. But made some headway. Got a stand in. I like one of the sets. I like the other stand I'm not too sure about. So we may still come back and make some adjustments, but for today, I think that's good enough. While we didn't quite get everything done on the list, we still got to fix that crossing of the two track, but we got a lot of stuff done and uh, we're gonna come back to that in a future episode of Deer Season 23. In the meantime, we're heading over to Terry and Forrest. Terry's got a big new project in mind and he's got heavy equipment to get it done. They're also up there spraying the nutrient pre-emergent and Terry's gonna take us through kind of his strategy on how they handle extreme browse pressure on their soybeans this time of year. Well, I hear today we're gonna to be spraying some pre-emergent on our corn, so getting our chemicals all mixed up. Uh, I got all the, the exact fluid ounces per acre mixed up. This is our 200 gallon tank sprayer, got on a little tractor. So we're gonna be spraying some corn first, then we're gonna switch over to beans and try to get all our pre-emergent on. We got some of it planted already, some of it's not. So we're gonna get all our chemical mixed up and get after it here. It's a perfect day to spray, low wind, sunlight's out. So those, uh, those weeds, they should suck that chemical in really, really well. Then we got some rain coming in a few days, gonna activate that residual and uh, get it going. So hopefully we can keep those fields clean till that, till that as plants, the corn and beans come up and we're able to spray on our post-emergent. So, gonna get after it here. We got Jerry started up here on a pond that we've been wanting to build for years and we're gonna get it, uh, try and get it, get it in, get it done and then try and catch some rain. We have to divert a little bit of watershed into it to catch some water because it's up on a hill. But that being said, we're putting it in for one food plot and one food plot only, this one. If you recall last year when Douglas stickers came in, this food plot looked horrendous, it was dry. You know, it's already drying up this year. Just got our beans and corn and everything planted and sprayed and we're ready showing a slowdown in the average rainfall. So uh, that's the reason for the pond. Forrest used the word stark, a stark contrast. Well, that's exactly what it is between inside the hot wire and outside the hot wire. This is testimony to what kind of browse pressure we have. Uh, you can see these beans, same beans planted at the same time. The only difference is the fact that he put five rows of, of hot wire up and that's what it takes to keep them out. People give us trouble about it, but uh, if you only put two or three strands up, they're gonna get through it pretty easily. So they're nibbling on the beans on the outside and we're giving them that and we're trying to, you know, trying to sustain the beans on the inside. We're doing that so that we'll come back in this fall and plant biologic here. Hopefully we'll be able to get some maximum winter bulb sugar beets and all that jazz. Thus the pond, so we've got something to water and keep this, this uh, biologic green and lush for them this fall. Well, we have a little whitetail nirvana behind us here. We tried to, you know, make this as park-like as we could a couple years ago when we did all the logging. And then these are the fruits of all the efforts, particularly Forrest went in. And I know people thought we were crazy, but we manicured this and tried to make it as park-like as possible. Then he came in and top dressed it, overseeded it with a, a playground mix or pasture mix with fescue and some other uh, grasses in there. But man, has it made some tremendous bedding right off of this food plot. And that's that's the reason or testimony to the browse pressure that we're seeing on this little food plot and also why the differential between what's fenced and what's not fenced is because they're bedding in here so close. We're in the early part of June here so uh, we're not going to do a lot of damage but we're working right here so hopefully they'll be back in here by fall. So we'll get cameras rolling once we get the pond built. Hopefully we'll get some rain, we need it desperately and uh, maybe things will be as good as they were last year. got it here. 
we're, uh, we're being rather ginger with the spillway. Typically, it would be a little bit deeper and we have a little more freeboard. But I'm wanting to try and get as much surface area here and as much volume out of this little puddle that I can get. So we're not going with as much or the depth of our spillway isn't what we would maybe normally do. But I'm not too concerned about it here in this little bitty water hole. So anyway, we're trying to maximize the effort, maximize the amount of work by going with a little bit shallower spillway so that we can get a little more surface area here. On another note, we went with pretty much a vertical face on that side. That's where Forrest would be coming in and out with his watering truck and our trailer and the tank and all the pump and all that. So we went with a vertical face there where he could drop his intake right in the water, almost straight up and down, so we got plenty of depth. We'll pump out of that. We'll go down to, to the uh, field right here. It's closed. It's only got 150 feet or so. And if, if push came to shove, which we use our fire pump to do that because of the pressure, but we could use a trash pump and somewhat let it grab the drain. You just don't get the you don't get the distance with that pump that you do with the fire pump. So pretty good chance he's going to be using his fire pump here. Well, they always say timing is everything. We couldn't have planned this any better. Jerry just finished building that pond yesterday. He and Forrest worked on it there for two days, got it all ready and, and uh, got it leveled up, looking really nice, got spillway in. Then Forrest went in this morning and seeded it. So we got all the seeds down and then lo and behold, Mother Nature came and dumped a little bit of rain on us here, much needed. Our corn, our beans were looking pretty good, but it needed a drink really bad. So just couldn't be more thankful to get a rain like this this time of year. Much needed. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by DeerCast Maps. Waypoints, weather, virtual rain gauges, and more. Every tool you need to get ahead of your game.